Hey y'all, welcome to Travel with Sam. Uh, this video is a little different than most of my other videos. Usually I just go on vacation and kind of record everything and then throw it on YouTube and uh, hope for the best. But this time I wanted to make a video to really show you guys who I am, show you my face, show you that I'm just a regular everyday person just like you. I just love to travel and I love to share my travel experiences with people so that is why I'm here and that is where our travel with Sam really stemmed from. So this video actually will be a recap of my most recent trip to Cartagena, Colombia and it was an amazing trip. Colombia is so beautiful. Unfortunately, I went, I guess, when it was rain season and it rained almost the whole time I was there. Um, so just a tip for people who are trying to go to Cartagena anytime soon, take a look at the weather, take a look at, I guess, the seasonal patterns. And if you really don't want to hit any rain while you're there, I guess don't go in November. That's what I went. I don't know when it rains over there, but I guess November it's rainy. Um, that's my first tip. Um, so let's get into it. I went to Cartagena for a bachelorette party, which was awesome. My best friend from college got married and thank you for, you know, letting me be a part of that experience. I love weddings and I was so happy to be a part of it. But it was a huge group of girls and anyone who's been on a big group trip knows that there can be ups and downs. Uh, it's amazing and it's so much fun traveling with a big group, but on the other hand, it's kind of hard to get everyone on the same page. It's kind of hard to get everyone ready to go to some event or out to the club on time. Uh, so there can be some challenges with traveling with a big group, but uh, I would just say if you are traveling with a big group, just to have an itinerary planned ahead of time, kind of have everyone on the same page ahead of time. So people just don't get surprised while they're there. So that'll be my one little nugget of advice if you're doing a planning a big group travel trip. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into the ins and outs of Cartagena. Um, first thing I wanna cover, of course, is food. I'm a thick girl. I love to eat any vacation I go on. I make sure I research like the best food of that country or that city to eat, and I eat it. So my favorite, favorite dish there is actually very popular there. It's called Posta Negra. And originally I thought it was just steak and rice, which I love me some steak and rice. But when I actually researched it further, it's actually beef in like a sweet sauce. And it's usually served with coconut rice um, or yuca or platano. And it's so good. So I actually had Posta Negra at a restaurant, um, which I'll go over with you guys in a minute. And then we actually stayed at an Airbnb, which was beautiful. And I, I always recommend staying at Airbnbs anywhere I travel because uh, hotels can be kind of corny and a little bit touristy sometimes. And I feel like at an Airbnb, you're getting a real experience. And if there are hosts with the Airbnb, I think even better because you're getting advice and stuff from the locals. But anyway, so our Airbnb was beautiful. We actually had a cook that came with the Airbnb and she made some posta negra and it was way better than the restaurant. I'm talking way better, like this meat, pause, was so soft. It literally melted in my mouth with the rice, like, uh, and then she made potatoes too. It was just, it was so good. Um, that's another thing I would recommend. If you're traveling anywhere and meet any locals, try to get like real local food. Don't be afraid to eat some street food. I don't know, pack some Pepto-Bismol or, or Tums with you if you're scared about your stomach, but always try to get real food. Like, I love me some real, real food. So Posta Negra is a must try for me. Arepas were also actually really, really good. Again, like that street food, anything quick was amazing. There was this one thing I ate that the cook at the Airbnb made for us and I don't know the name of it and I'm so sad because it was like the best thing I had there. It was like a little bola and it had meat inside um, for any of my Puerto Ricans, Caribbeans. If you know what alcapurias are, they kind of look like alcapurias, but more round. Um, and it had meat inside and it was served with like a side of, I don't know if it was sour cream or some kind of like light cheese sauce. Oh, man. Oh, it was so good. I want it, I'm still thinking about it. I wish I could go back and have her make it for me. I don't know what it was, but it was really, really good. Um, but if you see that, if you see like a little round ball with meat inside, and do it. Just do it. Just eat it. Oh, one food I forgot to mention. Ceviche. 
if you ever are traveling anywhere near water you gotta try the seafood even if you're like not a big seafood person I actually don't really like fish that much but if I'm somewhere where I know that it's fresh seafood I'm gonna try it because I may like it you never know another thing that I would recommend is the fresh squeezed juices over there uh, I'm sure you guys know if you travel to other countries sometimes you find fruits that you would never find in your home country like the states so they had this really really interesting tomate juice so their tomatoes over there are different from like what you think our tomatoes in the states look like completely different they taste when squeezed into a juice they, they're kind of tangy it's like an orange juice kind of i don't know how to describe it but it's interesting the first sip i was like oh do i like this and then a couple sips later i was into it i was into it so it takes some time just don't be afraid to try some new things that's all i gotta say about food moving on so you know i prefer local food and street food but if you're gonna go somewhere and eat out definitely research the restaurant before read the yelp reviews read any reviews on it um so we really had one official fancy dinner there it was the first time we were there because we were such a big group it was hard to really make reservations so the first time we were there we went to cafe del mar and it's a big touristy spot but every article i read about cartagena was like you gotta go to this restaurant so i'm like all right cool like, I'm with this. i don't like doing touristy things but once in a while you gotta throw them in there because you don't want to miss amazing things just because you don't want to follow the crowd or whatever so cafe del mar is known for their view it's like right I guess it's Oceanside, so it's right on the walled city. It's kind of, it looks like you're going up on a castle. It's really, really pretty. Um, actually, a lot of people recommended going during the day and seeing the sunset, but that was the busiest time, and it was really hard to make a reservation for 12 girls during that time, so we went at night. Uh, the food was really, really good. Um, the drinks were good, pretty strong, but the only thing I would say is the service was really slow. And I don't know if it was because they were overwhelmed that there were so many of us. Um, but there, we had one waitress and she didn't have any other tables, so I don't know. I think it was just a lot of us and then they were a little overwhelmed. But that's the only thing I would say. It's slow and, and from the reviews I read, it, it gets really busy. So try to go earlier, maybe for happy hour or something. And it's actually a little steeper price-wise than other restaurants in Cartagena. So if you're trying to save money, I would just like avoid any touristy restaurant really but again if you want the views you want that grand picture definitely check out that restaurant so sightseeing like i said before i hate doing touristy things but of course before i go on any trip i like to see like to research like the top spots that i should see and see where i really want to focus my time at so this time we actually ended up doing a bus tour which i don't mind bus tours I feel like it's a really quick way to get all the landmarks like out of the way in one day so the rest of the days that I'm on vacation I can just chill and do my own thing. But the bus tour that we did was so trash like I'm not even gonna lie it was really really trash. There's like a big plaza like the center it's called Plaza Santo Domingo not to be confused with DR. Um, that's also where like the Torre de Relo is and like a lot of landmarks are in this near this plaza. Anyway, so in this plaza, there's like a bunch of buses and they're like the open kind of buses with no windows. If you see those buses and they're like trying to get people to get on and they're like trying to hand out flyers and recruit people for the trip, uh, don't take that bus trip. It was so boring, first of all. Um, the majority of the trip, it was almost the whole day, it was a really long time. The majority of the trip was literally picking people up in different locations and you know, I, I hate to complain and, and I, I'm always so appreciative when I travel. I'm appreciative for like any experience. But it got to the point where we like had to talk to the bus driver and the, the host. And we were like, when are we going to actually see any landmarks? Like, this is taking a long time. He's like, oh, we just got to pick up a few more people. We, we have to make sure the bus is like fully packed before we go to the landmarks. So it was a whole thing. It wasted so much time. And on top of that, it was raining the whole day. So we were like tired and we were a little bit miserable because we were getting wet because the bus had no windows again um and they took us at the end to see a castle which i love castles i'm a princess at heart i'm gonna get married in a castle one day but every trip that i go on that there's a place with castles i go see it and i feel like i'm at the point where if you've seen one castle you've seen them all it's an old ass building it's cute whatever there's history but it like we were there for over an hour and I was kind of over it. So that's just something to think about. Uh, if you're going to Cartagena, you want to do the bus tours, just really research the company. Don't just get in 
any tour without researching like the reviews and the places that you're gonna see. Big tip for when you travel with a big group as well because bus tours are great for big groups. But yeah, just make sure that everyone's aligned with the itinerary of the bus tour. Moving on to what you really wanna hear, where are the best places to go to take pictures for the gram? Um, I love social media, I have an Instagram, you should follow it, Travel with Sam, two M's. But, um, so Cartagena is known for like their colorful walls and they have beautiful graffiti in Getsemani. So I would recommend taking the walking tour of Getsemani. We actually didn't have time to do this because our, our schedules were just so jam packed and there were so many of us. But if you can, they have a free walking tour in the mornings. Um, I think the location changes, but I'm sure if you like Google it, you'll find out. Um, I walk into our Hitsamani and it talks about the different murals and graffiti and like all the murals and the art over there on the walls are beautiful. Like the walled city itself is, I feel like it's a big museum. It's like a whole city slash museum. There's art everywhere. There's murals everywhere. So I think if you're really into art and really into getting like beautiful backgrounds for your Instagram photos, get in front of one of those murals or find one of those colorful walls in Hetsemani. Um, you're gonna get some bomb ass Instagram pictures. I'm sure you guys know this, but like know your angles, know the poses that you wanna do. Um, you know, I, I practice a lot because I do have a travel Instagram and I wanna make sure, especially when I'm traveling, like I'm always on the move, if I'm hitting a landmark, I already know the pose that I want to do in front of that landmark. So if I'm in front of a mural, I'm going to be like looking up at it, doing the nonchalant. I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. I, I didn't even I didn't even see this mural behind me. Oh my God, I'm so surprised. But yeah, just make sure that you practice before you like really get into your Instagram posing and all of that, your whole photo shoot, because I know you guys do it. I do it all the time. I'm not going to front. Another great place to take Instagram photos is in Hitsemani. They have like these streets with flags on top of them. They're like small streets like alleyways and they have a bunch of different ones one of them they have is actually with the f with the flag colors of the colombian flag so it's yellow blue red and it's just like if you get the angle right it's a really good picture they have another street where it's just like just different flags from a whole bunch of different countries and I, I love that street it also has lights so at night it looks really really beautiful so definitely get pictures in front of there for sure okay so i just had to look it up because i forgot what those streets were called with the flags but there's three main ones that you have to see. So it's Calle San Andres, Calle 37, um, which is 37, and then Calle 29, which is 29. And that's the one with like the different flags from all over the world. So definitely check those three streets out. And right after those streets, because Hetsemani is smaller, um, you can literally walk through the streets and then walk to the murals and all the street art, like right after, like everything's within walking distance, which is awesome plaza trinidad is another really cute little plaza to take pictures at it has like these colorful walls um it just looks really tropical and pretty and it's much smaller but i think it's still worth checking out because you're gonna pass by it on your walk through hits money anyways so don't forget to take pictures there okay so the last photo that you really need to take for the gram and i know this is super touristy and super stereotypical but you gotta do it for the gram um you have to get a picture with the palanqueras and that is the woman in like the beautiful dresses with the bowl of fruits on their head you gotta do it so funny story um and another tip that i i learned during traveling make sure if you're taking a lot of pictures on your phone that you have iphone storage is always a problem that i have because i take so many photos um, so when I went to Cartagena, I didn't clean my storage like I should have and I didn't delete old pictures. By the end of the trip, my phone was full and I was asking my friend to take pictures of me because I finally bumped into like one of the palanqueras and I was like, I need to take a picture with her for the gram. So my friend took it on her phone. Unfortunately, um, it got deleted um, off of her phone and I, I just never got the photo. So I'm really bummed about it because I wanted it for the gram. Make sure your iPhone has storage and take a picture with those women. They're really nice, but just a heads up, they're going to ask for money, um, which is, you know, that's they're, that's how they make money. That's how they thrive over there. So don't, you know, just don't negotiate with them. Just make sure you yeah, have a couple of dollars, pesos, and give it to them because that's their livelihood. You know, they really need that money. Definitely enjoy that picture. Have fun with them. The women that I took a picture with were like really fun and they were like telling me how to pose. They were like, Ooh, get down like this. We're gonna put the fruit on your head. And I'm like, oh girl, yes, I'm living for this. Ooh, yes, I'm Colombian now. The last thing I would recommend you have to do in Cartagena, you have to take a boat trip. 
um because cartagena is surrounded by water it's like a seaside place so they have amazing like beautiful islands not too far from cartagena but again do your research so one of the most popular islands there is like this beautiful private islands they're called rosario islands and i really really wanted to go there but i didn't realize they were so far i rented a big like boat catamaran for all of us and I, when I was talking to the company, I said, we really want to go to Rosario Islands. And like, I know it's far away, but you know, I've heard so many good things, we want to visit it. And the woman assured me, she's like, yeah, we can totally make that happen. We'll get you and your girls to Rosario Island and you're gonna have like a, a day on the private beach and all of that. But when I get onto the, uh, the boat, the driver is telling me that Rosario Islands is like eight hours away almost. And because it was raining that weekend and it was rough waters that it might take even longer So he recommended Cholon, which is again another beautiful island It was not the island that I wanted to go to but again if we had more time If you're planning a trip and you want to see the islands you need at least a day or two days to go out and see the island So make your trip longer if you want to take a boat trip is what I'm saying pretty much But Cholon is like a good alternative. It was like a big party island. They had a lot of amazing like fresh seafood i feel like they went in the water and caught the food i don't know it was so good um and there was like a bunch of boats docked on the water and everyone was just like partying everyone had music it was super fun i definitely recommend you checking it out if you're there to party and have a good time so the company that i used to rent the catamaran for the day was called get my boat and it was actually a really really great company they were very responsive they had really good reviews and photos um, my only complaint was like the trip was longer than expected and I wish that she would have explained that better But all in all like the driver was amazing. His his helper on the boat was amazing um, Funny story. I get seasick and I don't know why every trip I like make myself get on the boat because I know I'm seasick But I always pack my Dramamine if you get seasick make sure you pack your medicine but I think the water was just so crazy that day and it had just rained. I still got seasick and I was like popping drumming means like crazy. Like, I, and I still got seasick. The rest of the girls enjoyed the boat. The bride enjoyed the boat, which I know she really wanted to do. She really wanted to see the islands and stuff. But I was uh, vomiting for half of that uh, boat trip, which was, uh, it was cool. I guess I took one for the team. Um, so yeah, if you get seasick, plan ahead, bring your medicine. If you think you can't handle a long boat trip, don't even try it like just avoid it honestly i'm stubborn so i was like i'm gonna get on this boat i don't care if i'm throwing up the whole time and i did i threw up the whole time but i got the experience which was what met last thing you have to bring back some coffee from colombia they're like known for their coffee and what's funny is that i don't even drink coffee but i know that their coffee is good because i was like just walking by cafes and i was like dang this coffee smells good as hell um so yeah that's a really really good gift to bring back um to people if if you're the type i'm like me everywhere i go i buy souvenirs and i bring them back to my family because they don't travel as much as me and i still want them to get that experience so i brought back some coffee for my mom and my stepdad and they were super excited about it um and i even tried the coffee once when i was there and it was pretty good and for a non-coffee drinker like i really liked it so definitely take advantage of the coffee there you gotta have like a nice good cup of coffee all right, so that is my recap for Cartagena, Colombia. Some takeaways before you go is uh, make sure your iPhone got space for all your Instagram pictures because you're not going to want to miss any photo opportunities. It's a beautiful city. Uh, it has beautiful murals all over. It has beautiful colorful walls. So there's really good opportunities for perfect Instagram photos. Two, make sure you check the weather. If you're not really a rain person like me, you're going to be bummed because it is a walkable city, especially Hetsemani with all the artwork and stuff. There's free walking tours every morning. You just got to find the meeting spot. Again, Google it. Um, so check the weather before you go. And if you want to do the boat trips or take a boat tour to the private islands, which I totally recommend you should because they're beautiful, these islands. Make sure that you have enough time to do the boat trips and that you book the boat trip in advance and you really talk to them and make sure that you're secure with like the company and the driver. So those are my big tips. Uh, if you're going to Cartagena, I hope you have fun. It's an amazing, beautiful city. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.